Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are excited. We are changing things up for your three now, and we're bringing the Top Bin 90 podcast. So get ready, guys. It is going to be an amazing season. I got two of my top people here. I've got our chief editor, Brian Maurer. How are you today? Man, I'm doing well. I'm really pumped to be in the studio right now. This is like a way different experience than like than our being, usual lives. Than being yeah, and being just like hushed on the mic with like my daughter sleeping in the next room and just being like, <laughs> guys, it's I'm ready. I'm ready for Charlotte. Let's, let's, I'm hype about it. I'm hype about their signings and all that stuff. <laughs> but now being able to like be myself, full energy. It's going to be great, dude. I love it. And we have a top bin OG, well, Mr. Well, Lee well, from man. CLTFC Fan TV. How you doing? I'm today? good, man. This is some reminiscent it stuff is, right it here, is man. It's a big, big throwback. Day one, man. This is day one. I think I might have a picture somewhere. I might have to post it just so uh, yeah, for sure. we got it, man. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me. For sure. So there's a couple topics I want to talk on tonight um, for our podcast. And so I'll cover those topics, and then we'll go one by one. You know, I want to talk about the sale of Carol Swiderski and Camille and what that means for roster flexibility at Charlotte. Uh, we're also going to touch on who are the likely key players we need to step up this season for Charlotte FC to have a good season. What are some of the needs that need to be addressed this season for Dean Smith? Some key positional battles, and also where you guys see Charlotte FC battling this season in the table. So let's start off with you know that first question. You know, European deadline day turned out to be quite exciting for Charlotte FC. The Crown saw two of their three DPs move on. You know, you saw Carol Swiderski go on loan to Hellas Verona in Italy. Camille Yazviak with a permanent move to Granada, um, where another former Charlotte FC player is, Sergio Ruiz. So let's talk a little bit in terms of what that does for roster flexibility, right? We open up all three U22 slots. As of now, based off the Charlotte FC website, Corwin Vargas occupies one of those. You know, it's likely that Petkovic, you know, also um, gets moved up and uses one of those slots. But Lee, let's first start with your thoughts on moving both Carol and Camille this window. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I didn't, I didn't think Swiderski was going to be the one, was going to go right. That was a big surprise. I mean, the yeah. big thing was let's get Jaws off the books, right? It was a bad deal from the get go for Charlotte. Yada, yada, yada. Next thing we know, I think, did Carol go before Jaws, man? He did. Yeah, she did. <laughs> right? But it then, was, go yeah. ahead. It but, was like, Elas Verona, okay, cool. There's interest. Like, wait, wait, it's happening? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was some confusion or miss. I didn't quite understand the loan process just because MLS and the DP rules, but it seems Good like we're going to okay. Rules. Oh, God almighty, man. It gives me heartburn. Sometimes I think I know it, but then I don't. So, but yeah, I mean, you know, I think, I mean, we've said it quite a few times in the past right like one place that Charlotte missed out on was the DP slots right I mean especially with Jaws right I mean not knocking him as a player or whatever he just wasn't DP caliber or didn't it was taking a lot of hit on the salary cap and everything else on the books right for us and so to get him off was definitely a big thing for us and then obviously Carol had mentioned last year I think you guys actually broke it right that he was looking to leave and everything else so you know, he got his wish, and, you know, I don't know what the incentives are for them to have to buy him, but, you know, at least keep up, right? And then, um, you know, you know, I saw the goal, the team he was playing against this weekend, and what color they were? <laughs> blue shirt. Char Charlotte blue, man. So <laughs> there's that. So, but, yeah, I mean, overall, and then Mello, I mean, if we want to touch on Mello, I mean. So rest, Minty. Yeah, rest in peace, Minty, right? <laughs> but, I mean, he did he was just taking the spot up, right? I mean, For unfortunately, sure. he was hurt coming in. There was a botched surgery, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, it was just – it was probably best for him to get a fresh start somewhere too. For sure. Um, Brian, talk to me about – obviously, we understand the move of, of Camille, right? You know, somebody that, you know, hasn't produced to that DP level. Mm -hmm. But also, I mean, in my opinion, you have to try and keep your best player – I get that's where Dursky wanted to go, but at the same time, right, like, we have the anomaly of what Enzo could be this season. So talk to me about the move of Carroll specifically. Yeah, well, Actually, so I thought that I thought that Carroll could be gone this winter. I thought based on kind of a lot of the reporting that was coming out last summer especially, it really seemed like he was pushing for a move. His agent was really pushing for a move, specifically because he's our, I mean, he was their best player. But playing their best player out of position so regularly, out of the position that he wanted to play in, it seems like even though 
maybe I mean he seemed like he was willing to work hard you know show up for training not really push for the move like as an outsider it looked like he was willing to show yeah. up for the team I think inside there might have still been some rifts and really desired to move obviously that's why the deadline day deal happened I think the big aspect of that move like we talked about when it came to the loan is just the fact that they were able to get enough of that money off of the books to where he's not the DP, so they can still find that replacement. I think that really comes down to the key. Who do they sign to replace your best player? If you find a player who can replace those goals, then we're not going to really be concerned as much about Carroll being gone because we'll have a player maybe ideally in a, their natural position. So if they sign a new DP in their natural position, then like I th- I'd say it's water under the bridge for the most part because then you've got a player who wants to come in Yep, for Playing sure. a position of need, and all of those things. But I mean, for sure, you, the pressure's on, right? The it pressure's is. on it because is. I mean, he's the only guy ever to have double-digit goal contributions in a season for Charlotte. They they have to replace a decent amount of goals, right? So I mean, you gotta find you gotta find that player. And I, God, if they wait, the longer they wait, I mean, it's. My question is though, like when they brought in Capetti, what was that conversation like, right? For sure, yeah. Like it's confusing to me, like because. Latantio wasn't playing a four four two or whatever, nope. whatever, whatever two, right? It was somebody was oh, not to say most fat players last year started out of position, anyways. Yeah. But you know, it was <laughs> yeah. like why bring in another DP caliber player yeah. to have to force one of your DP guys out of their yeah. preferred position? I'm curious to see what that conversation was yeah. like for them to say, okay, Carroll's gonna be the ten yeah. and Enzo's the nine, because at the end we were all like, well, you know. Carroll's been more productive in that nine role. I mean, he scored more goals than Enzo, and he was playing right wing sometimes. He was playing a 10, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, multiple positions for this team and still producing, right? Talk to me, Brian, a little bit more about that uh, roster flexibility, right? Because, I mean, what Lee talked about is true, right? Like, you're kind of stuck holding the bag, right, for a large portion of this season, or a, lot, a large portion of that European transfer window, right? And now it seems like we're, we're racing against the clock. Yeah, I mean, well, they do have a ton of flexibility. I think we got to add Carujo in there as well. Yeah, for His sure. His salary sure. was at like yeah. over 600, like near, near the max. So yeah. you've got three players that were all at max out. So you got like 1.9 million worth of salary cap space opened up. That's at least three players. Plus they still have targeted allocation money available. So there's like the amount of flexibility that they have is like, pretty unreal in terms of and they have this open spots on the roster to make some serious moves it's just whether or not they get them across the line so they have a ton of flexibility they can go two senior dps and kind of do what they did before i don't think that would happen because i mean we're looking at petkovic and we've talked about this before and we've tweeted about this report on it it really seems like he's likely to be on the u22 mm-hmm. you know initiative which requires them to have a young dp so i think that's probably still the most likely scenario but they have a ton of money not just with their dp signings to replace dps they have i mean a ton of money in terms of getting another big time like near the the, the max salary level plus a targeted allocation money player tam level player similar to what that's what ashley westwood and breck diachere are so right. something similar to that i mean they just have a lot of room to make a splash and it's just like that's what's surprising me is we haven't really heard much about what those potential splash moves could be. That yeah. for me is the big alarmingness with all like they they open up all this flexibility for sure. So like I would that's that's my one concern as we approach the season is like having those moves and yeah. that flexibility actually activated on because for if they sure. come in to week one with this lineup as it is. And we'll, well, nice. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that a little <laughs> yeah. bit more. But yeah, I also see us, I mean, right, well, I'm curious. Um, most likely we'll see that third U22 spot filled, right? Yeah. And also, you know, I would be expecting more of a, a big DP in the summer yeah. versus right now, right? Given the circumstances, given that, like, I mean, more often than not, our scouting department and our sporting director are looking at Europe versus uh, South America, right? And so maybe another big DP from one of these countries. Yeah, I mean, I would think Zorn and Co. have realized, all right, this didn't work, right, the first two years. This is kind of what we need to do. So Well, you mentioned that, but then we're up to like 13 international slots again. Remember what he said? <laughs> you know, he, was, he, he went on, I think, Fair. Big City Pod, where he said, you know, yeah. hey, we made some mistakes, didn't bet in MLS yeah. as much. Yeah, but yeah. I'm like, now we, we still have 10, 12, 13 
Plus I can't keep up with slides. that, man. Gam and Tam and all that <laughs> shit's flying around, man. Right. And, you know, next thing you know, if somebody posted certain minties on his way out to ask them for some gam, man. I, you so know, we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have to go back through and check my notes. Yeah. For sure. All right, moving on to uh, a different topic, too. I want to talk to you guys about who you see in this current squad um, being a key player, right? You know, and so I'll start off with you, Lee. Oh. There's two, right? I mean, I think we see Vargas kind of starting to show his way, For right? Sure. I mean, he's done well with his club. He was doing good with us. I felt sometimes last year, Latanzio just held him back. It was like, you know, when he first came here, he was attacking players, driving up players, ruling to shoot, you know, go in the box, whatever. And then all of a sudden, he just sort of lost his way. And I don't know if that's just because the manager was telling him, hey, you know, we, that's not how we're doing this, right? We're going to keep playing the wings and you're going to cross it in. And then you got Capetti, right? I mean, he came in. And we touched it on it live on our live show last Tuesday. You know, when he came in, his first day he met the team players, right, was the day of uh, Walks' his funeral, right? Then he had his new kid, and he's in a new country, right? So he had his little baby. Those are fair points. Right? Those so, very fair points. And then to adjust to the league, and I know we all gave him a bunch of shit for the flop in and everything else he did, but now I'm hoping with the new league rules that that's going to get ruled out. You yeah. know, that's going to change. And I'm sure Dino's put his arm around him, right? And, you know, just I think – I think Dino is going to allow him more freedom to play his game, and hopefully that shows up. For sure. I mean, I agree with you. I think Enzo, ha for me, has to be the focal point for Charlotte FC this season, right? I mean, he's our only DP left as of now, right? You know, he's coming into his second season at Charlotte. MLS players tend to do better their second, second season, season yeah. right? And, I mean, let's not forget, he was a prolific goal scorer that last season in Argentina with Racing. I think he had 20 goals, five uh, assists. I mean, right? that's a team sniffing around now, if you want to believe the reports, right? Yeah. One and back in For Argentina. Sure. So, so he, he has that type of value still. And right, and I think if and if uh, Dean Smith can get him right cooking, can get him right. Um, Just believing in himself again. For sure. <clears throat> and so that's a player I see. And like you mentioned, Brecht. Brecht is almost on a million, right, in yeah. terms of how he affects our, our um our cap. Our cap, right? And to me, right, I judge a player. I've always said it. I judge them based on how they hit the cap, right? Yep. So Brecht, outside of Swiderski now leaving, to me, he's probably our most technical player, right? Under Latanzio, we saw him play more on the winger, which in my opinion, I thought he was coming in as a midfielder, right? So I need to see a big season for him coming in, right? A winner, 32 now, right? So he's got that experience. Yeah, for sure. I think Brecht is near the top of my list as well. Um, and then Ashley Westwood, I think, is another name for me that just, I mean, he seemed to just gradually get better and better and better as the season progressed. I think a big part of that is his injury. Like, he's yeah. fully recovered as the season went on. He even, I think it was on Crown Talk with Eric and Lloyd, he mentioned that, like, he felt around the summer that he was really starting to feel fully recovered. And I think we could really see that with his performances on the field. And just with how hit or miss our midfield was like all year last year. I feel like him and Brecht both are going to be really pivotal to how this team, how well this team succeeds just because, I mean, they just can't have the turnovers in really bad spots that they had. They had a lot of turnovers, a lot of possession, just poor possession play, especially in their own half, which led to those counterattacks, goals against. Westwood and Brecht for me are a big part of that. For sure, for sure. I mean, obviously these guys – in my opinion, guys like Enzo and Kerwin are really going to have to push us this season because we're seeing teams in and around us oh, just get yeah. better and better. And we'll talk a little bit about more <clears throat> more in depth here near the end on that. Yeah. Um, but moving, segueing over to some of the needs that need to be addressed under Dean Smith this season. What are some of the things that you guys see, and I'll start off with you, Brian, that really need to change going into year three? I mean, we got to see less goals against, right? I think <laughs> that's sure. a big one that jumps off the page. Yeah. Now, I don't think that's just from the defensive line. I think that comes from our possessional play, how we use the ball, and where, like, again, like I just said before, like when it comes to like get less turnovers, especially in our own half. Um, ha and I think also how you, like you said about Kerwin and Enzo, the how much respect they earn in the attacking half will dictate how we're played against in our defensive half because if teams don't feel like they have to respect our attack they're going to press more they're going to push up higher and then they're going to win those turnovers in our in, in charlotte's half and then that's how 
a lot of those goals against happen as well. So For I think sure, and just just to give you some perspective, I mean, Seattle scored less goals than less goals than us last season in yeah. MLS, but the biggest difference was they had over 20 less goals against, right? I think they led the league in yeah. clean sheets. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so, one nil is three points. <laughs> yeah. Right. So they finished <laughs> yeah. second in the West and we finished ninth. Yep. Right. So, I mean, that, that defensive pairing for me is going to be very, very interesting to see yeah. what happens, right? I mean, last year we saw mostly Melanda and Privet. That was the center back pairing that yeah. Latanzio chose to use the most. And you know what? You see some qualities in Privet, but at the same time, I'm like, is he ready for 32 games, yeah. right? Like, I, I don't know. I would I would rather bring somebody more experienced, right, to pair up with Melanda. And even Melanda, you know, he struggled in large portions of last season, yeah. right? And I think a fresh start for him with how high we rate him, yeah. I think would, would, would be beneficial for him. Yeah, I mean, Dino called it out, right? One of the press conferences, uh, a winger and a left-footed center back, right? And for sure. You know, to, to touch on some of your points, I think a lot of our problems, too, is that even when we had those fast breaks, we stopped, right? We And then we passed it back or we were waiting and, and the other teams were sort of catching up, bringing their players back behind the ball. And then there was no sort of no, no shot and then we lose the ball and nine times out of ten they score. I mean, I will say there was a lot of mental errors. And I mean, you know, I'm not sure if we're going to touch on any of the preseason stuff, but it's, you know, and, and with preseason, it can yeah, be. Like, yeah, um, let's touch on that. Now. Yeah, all right. So preseason, obviously, you're just testing out players, trying to figure it out, right? There's a lot of turnover, right? I mean, they played, what, three 30-minute halves and probably had, like, 23 subs, yeah. right? <laughs> so seeing us letting in late goals, while it's not too concerning right now, it's like, let's not bring that yeah, back over Yeah, it definitely from the gives past. you that ghost of yeah, like, yeah. Christmas past. For right? sure, for sure. But um, also, I think another thing to, to touch on would be, like, I'd like to see more creative freedom in the final third for our 100%. players. Right? I think Dino's going to allow. That. Right. I mean, like yeah. it felt like last season, like you had to almost tap it in. Yeah. Right. Like it had to be Shoot men city, outside pass, the box, pass, pass, pass go in. Right. <laughs> yes. So I think for flair players like uh, Vargas, right, or players who are better on the ball, maybe like a guy like Brecht, right, yeah. can have that freedom and hopefully that produces more. Yeah, and to take risks. I feel like overall just like increase the amount of risks they kind of take in the right spots and yeah. picking their spots to make those like more riskier through balls happen or 1v1 situations and just like taking advantage of those and picking their spots better I think is all a big, big part of like whether or not they find success. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, Dino's sort of come out and said not to sort of like keep, you know, not give him any sort of pressure or anything, but he's like saying all the things that we were bitching about last year. You know, take the shot if it's there, right? Yeah. Make the passes if it's there. Quit second-guessing yourself. Yep. Like, just play the game, right? And I feel like that's going to give Capetti, Vargas, whoever comes in on the right wing, a lot of freedom, you know, and then obviously, you know, the 10 and that. It just It's just going to be – I hope it's just more fluid. You know, there was many times we stood back there in the supporter section. You could see the shot was on. Like, yeah. just take the shot. Yeah, Stuff happens, sure. right? The, Deflection to keep a fumble is it. You know, it goes in. Yep. <laughs> you know, I just want to throw all my beer all over the place next year, man, <laughs> this season. <laughs> nice, nice, awesome. So I guess just staying in that topic kind of, like I want to talk a little bit about some key positional battles that you guys see. Obviously, I feel like we've got a clearer picture now with three players moving on, like Guzman, Camille, Carol, you know, Melo also, right? I mean... At, at right back, I feel like that's there's the going to be I think a, that's big, the big battle. a big one, yeah. right? Yeah. Lee, who starts for you at the beginning of the season, Nathan Byrne or Jalen? Nathan Byrne. Why? I don't know. I just feel like he's got more pace. Um, you know, I, I mean, we saw it. He got – I feel like Byrne got a lot of heat for some things that was not quite his fault last year. I mean, yes, there was like that one own goal, right, where he went to go headed. I believe it was him yeah. and it went in. Yeah. But then like the one against Nashville when it was a penalty, I mean – he was fast enough to come back, run over, tackle that player, right? And, and it just I, – I don't know. I think Kalina could have helped him out a little bit more yeah, than what he did. I think that one was on him. Well, gotta, you know, yeah. man. You know, yeah. I think both Nashville games, he had a penalty yeah. at home and penalty away. See, this is your show, game. so I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> <laughs> I but, do I do think from like the league's cup on Nathan yeah, we saw a difference in yeah, burn to where I, I thought he was near maybe yeah. even a player of the year. Yeah. I think it was between him and Westwood last year and I think he, that was from league's cup on that was really when Nathan Burns shined. I could easily see him yeah. winning the role because of that his defensive capabilities. He seems to just defensive know-how even yeah. though he has made some of those errors. 
Um, he made a couple. Well, of Lindsay's pretty good about stopping the the crosses from coming in and that sort of thing, and he's good at crossing the ball. I just think the difference to me between the two is just the pace. Right, yeah. and I think sometimes pace is needed to come across, yeah. help your center back, yeah. right? Yep. And I, I think yeah. the the experience pack factor that plays too, a role right. as well, yeah. right? Yeah, you mentioned it. I mean, like, I don't remember against Dallas that run he made to save yeah. Yeah. the game, right? So, I mean, like, we're – I mean, part of the problem last year, too, was, like, seeing players get played out of position. Remember, 100%. he played center back, <laughs> yeah, I mean, right, one game. Right? Which, to be fair, back. he wasn't doing as bad until he made that critical mistake, Yeah. right? Yeah. So, for me, also, I think – the midfield trio that we see is going to be interesting, right? Like, yeah. who starts, right? I mean, we have, like, first of all, we have to see how Dino plays. He's going right. to stick to a 4-3-3, three, three, right? Are we going to see a single pivot? Are we going to see a double f- pivot, right? Are we going to see Ashley start at the 6, you know? Are we going to see Brant for a lot, for the later portion of the year, played more of the 8, right? Yeah. And in my opinion, he's better as a 6, right? Um, and so, okay, does Brecht go on the wing? Does Brecht stay in the middle, right? Scott Arfield is coming in and scoring goals. So there's a lot of options, quote unquote, that um, that Dean Smith has, right? Brian, if if you were to start the season right now and I told you to have a midfield trio, who would that be for you? It's a good question. See, I feel like there's a lot of options. There's also a lot of question marks. For sure. You know, so I feel like for me... I think going on with the group right now, I mean, obviously Westwood's a lock, right? So yep. Westwood's a lock. I think Brecht is a lock. I think it comes down to whether or not you play a double pivot, and then I think if that's the case, for me, Brant Bronico probably fits in that double pivot role. I actually don't think, as a pure single pivot six, I like Brant that much in that situation just because of the, the amount of running he for likes sure. to do. Yeah. He kind of puts himself out of position a decent amount. But if you have a double pivot, you have an option to kind of run forward, have somebody cover, and kind of switch and cover for each other, which I think that's where Brant would be successful in that double pivot role alongside Westwood. And I just I trust Brant more right now than Arfield. Arfield did make those super sub goals. But for me, I just haven't seen enough from him. And it really does seem like Dean Smith already likes Brant Bronico. As yeah, he I ha- think he's, he's just like, he's, I a, think we've heard he's, that. A, he's a coach. He's, a, he's a workhorse, dream. right? He, set, he sets yeah. the tone for the entire team. He puts his head down he and he clearly gets does it super no matter, professional. No matter yeah. who the coach is, he just comes in and he's consistent and he sets yeah. a bar high in terms of what training needs to be on a daily basis. Yeah, and it's I mean it's just going to be hard to well, like he says though, that. he does yeah. a, he's that grind set right, and that's yep. that's his yep. thing, and he pushes it and he lives to it as well. So. Now, if sure. they sign, like obviously they were already looking <clears> for a beak. There's all those yeah. reports earlier. If they were to make a move at attacking mid instead of winger i think we're having a different conversation well, but just as is i just I, I i think it's hard for our field given his age to beat brant off of the, one of those starting spots fair. just i mean i just well, i don't he's not gonna ha- i don't think he has the legs to compete with a brant in terms of just what he's gonna show in training for week some one. of those you know, players you know, though they always have that super sub sort of title that just follows them yeah. their whole career yeah. right yeah. and it's like you just can't shake it so yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, over. So you guys aren't giving, I mean, a guy like Petkovic who came for a reported fee yeah. of about three million to crown legacy, yeah. any like chance of saying, okay, this guy has to start? Because for me, that's a pretty commanding fee. For sure, you I know, don't. Regardless think it's... of if he went to crown legacy or Charlotte at first, right? To me, I'm like, okay, if you're spending this much on a player, like he needs to be important on your team, right? Yeah. After Enzo and Carroll, that's the most expensive uh, buy so far in the club's history. Yeah, I mean, I guess the thought there is, like, we haven't really seen him play at, you know, the senior level, right, to see what he can bring. I mean, on paper and at Legacy, he looks brilliant, right? So, I don't know, man. It's like, it it definitely gives Dean some options there, right? I think, personally, though, I mean, even last year, I think we have a good good team. Not, you know, elite or anything by that. We have a a good team that can challenge again. We just had some bad results go away. I mean, what we dropped like twenty points from leading positions last year. I mean, more than I think that's being conservative. Yeah, yeah, but that's what <laughs> I'm saying, right? I mean, that, yeah. that that pushes us up, and I know the teams around us have all done stuff too. But I don't know. To your question, I, I would just like to see him sort of slowly be brought into the team and see where he fits, right? And then obviously, whoever we decide we're going to purchase. Um, and as far as Tolomo or Melanda, are mm-hmm. we pretty in unison with you know Melanda has to start? Oh, only if you're picking only yeah. one of them uh-huh. to start. Oh yeah, I mean it's not even. It's not, I mean, so, a lot of starting for me. 
uh, then who's going to be your your other center back? Well, we got to see. Charlotte says that they're making signings, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, but <laughs> the season's what yeah. two weeks away this Saturday. For sure. <laughs> now, I do think Tui Loma could easily start at left center back. For sure. Yeah. You know, I think he got a bad rap last year too. Well, but also, yeah. th- our style of play didn't help him. Yeah. You know, no. like he was left exposed multiple times. And the thing, <coughs> so Burn. in his in his starts, he had what two starts where he was the left center back, and he actually had a left back playing left back next to him. Joseph Moore played two starts, and it was Brant Bronico. He had as many starts with Brant Bronico on his left as he did an actual left back. Yeah, it wasn't that's a true a, left back, a right? Point. It yeah. wasn't a true left back. And no, now he we had, had Nathan. Ruin. Yeah, Nathan Byrne. It was either Nathan Byrne, Brant Bronico. I think maybe Harrison Afool also played over there once right, or twice. I think yeah. it was against RSL. That's a fair point. And so, like, if you're playing with uh, somebody who's out of position on that on that left side, like on your left, you got to cheat I mean, over, right? And then you've also got then Melanda, who while is probably I would say maybe at least top three in terms of overall potential of what he can be. He still showed signs of like his his youth and inexperience in terms of just taking over a leadership role along that back line. So you've got that on your right, and then you have an out-of-position play on your left. Yeah. And then you've got Latanzio making everybody uncomfortable <laughs> because they're all playing out of position, and they're all like moving in and out and inverting, and they're all just doing random things. And so, and then on top of that, you're coming in. I mean, we talked about Enzo coming in when Anton, Anton Walks passed away, mm. Tui Loma came in to replace yeah, Anton yeah. Walks yeah, who passed away. Too. And so I think... But there, also, I mean, Tuloma came that. in with a pretty hefty, like, one Jeez. feet and yep. two, like, he was he was coming in, like, okay, yeah. like, this guy is safe. Well, he had the MLS experience, right? For yeah. sure. But to, I think to Brian's point, right, I mean, you got somebody playing out of position over yeah. here that you got to kind of cheat for, and then yeah. at the same time you got a, a rookie... Right, playing behind you that you sort of have to cover as well, and it's I could see him getting lost. And yeah. I mean, as we all said, and we've all screamed like playing these position players out of the positions the way we were and the sort of style yeah. we played was. W- Do you give Privet any chance of <clears throat> starting again? I think. Personally, I think Privet did what he had he had to come in yeah. and do, right? Yeah. I mean, I it think didn't make a me, lot of mistakes. To me, Privet is like a Patrick Ajimon, right? Yeah. I personally don't think. Pat is ready for 32 games in right. and out, but he's good to start a good portion of the games, yeah. right? Or come in and be that impactful yeah. sub, be that target man, yeah. right? Um, but you don't typically sub out right. defenders, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's a fair point. Yeah. I, I, I think Privet fit what Latanzio was trying to do as an emergent. I mean, I think obviously Latanzio wanted a fullback to invert. And that just never worked. Yeah. And so he's like, well, maybe I can get a midfielder to in, to s- just push yeah. up. And I think so Privet fit a very niche. It's like a hybrid role he was re- playing. Yeah, and it was just very neat. I don't, I cannot imagine that Dean's, like, when they went through the hiring process, they were like, hey, do you want to try all these, like, little intricate things? <laughs> yeah. We just tried it, and it didn't work. Do you want to do that also? I think <laughs> Dean Smith, I mean, that one of the things was clear, like, hey, we have these players available. We think we have a really solid group of players. Yeah. Can you play them where we think they should be playing? Because we have a drawing board and we like to keep it like we don't have to erase and move it around so much because we think we know where we want right. them to play. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Are you willing to work with us on that? And I imagine that was something Dean Smith was always like, "Yeah, that sounds like a circus." So yeah, I mean, <laughs> and kind of was right. I yeah. mean, not to, again, not to knock on the players, but you know, I don't know. I'm gl- I'm glad we have the manager we have. You know, hopefully he can get. You yeah. know, the confidence back in some of these players that are probably yeah. just tired of, you know, pundits like us, right, bitching and complaining about the style of play and why they're not doing that. Yeah, pundits that. like you that need to talk more about Messi when yeah. he wins the ball. Oh, how the hell? <laughs> how the hell? You were waiting for a, a spot to get Messi in, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's why they went to Saudi and lost 6 now, yeah. right? Yeah. So anyways, but yeah, I don't know. I think Dino is... You know, he's going to come in and he's going to put his philosophy in place, hopefully. I, again, like I said earlier, I think we had a good enough core players last year. It was just I think the style of play didn't match the sort of flair that the players have. For sure. I, th- I mean, my biggest thing with a guy like Dean is the experience, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. The experience that, you know, Latanzu didn't have, the experience that Miguel didn't have, right? Yeah. So that's a leg up that this manager has over, you know, the previous two. And also, I don't know how much this plays into it, but, like, a lot of our experienced players are, like, you know, from 
England, Scotland, right? So like that. that's where the best balls played, man. <laughs> so you mm-hmm. have kind of that mix with Dean that when he's looking at some of his leaders, right, you got experienced guys in like Scott Arfield and Ashley Westwood that could probably go to bat for you when you're not there, right? You know? Yeah, yeah, got his back. Yeah. And then I think also pragmatism too. I think he's also for he's sure. really promoted that he's willing to be flexible with what he has available, and yeah. he knows that that's yeah. life in soccer. Where it seemed like that was something Latanzio was not super keen on. He was like, <laughs> "I mean, this you is saw my that system. in the playoff this is how game. I play, and we're gonna play like this." And I think Dean Smith is kind of like, "Hey, man, I'm not above the game. Yeah. I can figure out." Not, and I'm not saying necessarily Latanzio thought he was above the game, but I'm just like he had a style of play, and he, that's yeah. how he wanted to play. Dean Smith seems like he's more willing, like. These are the players you have available because it's hard, especially in a league like MLS, to just pick a perfect situation for each position out of all 11. And Dean Smith seems more willing to be like, these are the guys, the guys you got me. I'm going to make it. I'm going to figure out a solution to make it work with with those players in mind. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, even when he had that press conference where all of us were invited to, I asked him about that, like, okay, are we going to see, you know, that possession based attacking football that Charlotte has said from day one and yeah. not that he shied away from the question but he's like more like it's more on what I have available in terms of my player how that style of play will actually come out and yeah. to me that means okay I'm going to play players where they need to play right so <laughs> I mean, hell. that's a big positive right <laughs> yeah. so our right winger who is going to be in that slot <laughs> TBD yeah. trialist trialist <laughs> yeah <laughs> We love trialist over here, man. Or own goal might get a start, you know. Right. But um, I don't know. I guess shit. Breck, I guess. I don't know, man. Who, who do you put? Cambridge is hurt, right? I mean, that was my front runner was Breck. Yeah. For sure. Just because, I mean, you're just literally out of, you're we, out of options. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I guess we could throw Brent over there. Uh, you know, he's played in every yeah. position except for keeper <laughs> now. You know, I might as well let him just knock that off his bingo card. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do a Brent Bronico bingo card. Yeah. Like left back, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, eight six, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I love that. All right, now let let's talk in terms of where you guys see Charlotte battling this season. And Lee has been Mister Positivity online recently. You know, I have. Jo- Joe comes on your show, and oh, now man, all I got you bought do- out by the club, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Go PSLs, man. Yeah, get all the shirts, get all the kits, buy all the swag, man. Yeah. Just yeah, get all your tickets, man. Buy all the beer in the stadium. <laughs> Make sure you get the seventy-five dollar hot dogs. Just do it all, man. This, you know, the club needs you. The club needs you. Seventy-five dollar glizzies. <laughs> yeah, you heard it. Here first. <laughs> yeah. Where do I see the club being? Oh, battling. Oh, yeah. I don't think, at least with the squad we got now, we're a top five. Uh-huh. Um, I'd say we're going to be battling somewhere around that six, seven, eight spot. Okay. That's optimistic. <laughs> That's very optimistic. Yeah. Six is optimistic. Yeah. Uh, eighth, yeah. I'm just thinking, like, you know, eighth? the play in. Is that yeah. the play in? The, yeah, the, the top in. nine. Yeah. yeah. So I think we'll definitely make the play in. I just don't know. It's really going to depend on who we bring in. And, again, we haven't really seen how Dino is going to play. I mean, you know, Wednesday we got the first stream, at least, of a preseason game. It's just going to depend, man. I I don't know. It's too early to call that. I feel like six is very, very generous. I mean, I see the team. Yeah, but if he gets Jack Grealish in. Right, probably eight to 13th is where I see this team competing right now. Why? Because – we're, what, less than 20 days now from yeah. the season starting, right? We just let our best player go, Fair. right? So yeah. we can be a competitive team. The problem is look at everybody around us. Everybody oh, uh, that finished yeah. ahead of us last season, I don't see them dropping off, right? No. And then you look down and, you know, Miami's still an anomaly, right? So you don't know, but I, uh, I, would, bet, Miami's gonna cook. I would bet that they do well. Yeah. NYCFC just made a huge signing. Yeah, today, right? right? Yeah. Montreal has addressed a lot of their needs, right? Mm-hmm. So, and what have yeah. we done? We've really haven't, you know, we've made a coaching change, which was great, right? But outside of that, there is more questions I have going into this yeah, season. Yeah, I think it's too early to try to answer, like, where we, I just want to see us play a game, right? Yeah, but this is this is what we have to go based off of right yeah, now. Yeah, can you what ask me, like, week two? What we have to go based two. off of is, you know, the lack of signings, and two, every other team strengthened. Fair. Yeah. So, but then, to the point earlier, right? Not to mention, uh oh, the, t- the look how tough our first seven games are. We play against NYCFC, then we travel three games in a row, come back, play the MLS Cup champs, and the Supporter Shield winners. 
Oh, we got this, man. But no, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I guess to the point, right, is last year we dropped so many points from winning positions. I think if we take that out, right, that's guaranteed at least 10 points, right? Yeah. Right? I know we dropped more than 20, I think it was, but I think we can we, – there's two or three games in there that we can probably pick up. Now, the, the, the question becomes is, like, you know, uh, again, which position is uh, – how is Dino going to play? Like, what kind of formation is he going to play? Who's going to be playing in center back if we don't get a center back? Who's going to be right back? It's just – it, like, we don't know – like, it could be the end of the week. We could have Jack Grelish in because he, apparently he was unhappy at City for being on the <laughs> yeah. bench, right? So, and Dino, go get him, Dino. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I think we would definitely make the play-ins or whatever we want to call it. I don't know. I see us struggling. I, I think um, – so, the positive side is between uh, seeds 8 and 13, there's a three-point gap. Yeah. Right? So – the positive side is it we benefit very, from MLS being mid. Yeah. So well, the, <laughs> well, yes, I, I'd say that most of these most of these teams between eight and thirteen last year definitely both benefit this year and then also uh, did last year and then, but the the pessimistic side is all of those teams have like signed new DPS like you said before made made some pretty significant signings. Uh, DC also, I don't think he had thrown them out there. They just signed uh, a new white for sure. Six. Yeah, DC. And uh, and yeah. they already have, like, Klich and Benteke are leg- like legit. And so I think they, um, they, I mean, NYCFC for sure underperformed last year, and they have some really great new young signings. But, I mean, I think that's the pet. So there's, like, there's some optimism in terms of, like, if, say, Capetti ends up, like hitting, right? He gets Dang, ten to fifteen right. goals. That difference in goals. If he gets like fifteen goals, that's nine more. That's easily, like you said, that's where those points yeah. get dropped off, and they start winning, uh, picking up some of those drop points. Picking up a few of those drop points puts you solidly into that eighth spot or so, maybe even higher. But the thing is, like, how many of these other points are being picked yeah. up? How quickly are these teams acclimated? Because at the same time, there's also a lot of new coaches, not just teams. I mean, let's say, you know. Lesnar and, and DC, NYC, oh no, NYCFC still has Cushing, but um, Montreal's got a new coach. So all these guys, I mean, all these teams around them, New York Red Bulls have a new coach. They For all sure. have new. Well, coaches. we have a new coach too. Yeah, that's what I'm, yeah. So yeah. so it, there's just all these teams. There's a, there's a lot of question marks <clears throat> across the board, and and a lot yeah. of wiggle room to to make that up. If if the players that you know, it's just. Like yeah, said, I mean, to me, to it's like out. it's hard to this say. This is where, right? like, you know, judging Dean Smith, right, is going to be very difficult. Yeah, those first 10, 15 games, because I feel like he's playing against, you know, right, not a lot of signings coming in, a yep. tough first seven games, first season in MLS, right? Like, we haven't seen a signing. Like, if Charlotte would have brought us a Coutinho or a Griezmann, right, we could all agree, okay, this guy could help us get a top five. Right, but we don't have that to go off of because we're not in the market. Right, we haven't found a gem of a player that's just going to take us to another level. We don't have a you know a Drusi at Austin FC. We don't have a Honey Mukhtar. Right, we don't have a Boanga who's going to come in and like okay, like this guy is like taking us to a top four level, a Lucho Acosta. Right, and so I mean it becomes very difficult. Like, what are we betting on? In terms of Charlotte being well, just being competitive last year. What are we betting on? Well, I'm betting on that at least the tactics will be enough, and that Dean will be willing to change them up in the middle of a game instead of just being so hard headed and waiting until the 75th, 80th minute to make the changes that were needed when you were already three down. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it. I think also the one issue with getting into the top slots, even with new signings. Is I feel like that top six in the East, the East is so tough. Man. East That's is another ridiculous. point. The, the, top, the ridiculous. top six look pretty for me, <clears throat> pretty locked in. Both right. because they they made all their. I mean, they kind of you can kind of just tell the way how systematically they have things. They like they cut their they got rid of the DPS they needed to in the summer last year, and so they already have the spots available. And then they made the signings they need to in the winter, and they just kind of like have this like it methodology yeah. that they just like bang 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 done, and then like all their moves are already set and they just already had the established roster to get into the top five in the first place. So it's hard to find which one of those teams would drop out for a team like Charlotte who already has a lot of question marks to find a way in. Exactly. Right. So I think like they're just like those top five, Cincinnati, Orlando, Columbus, Philadelphia, New England, even throw Atlanta and Nashville in there. Like how do you break into that top seven? Yeah. 
You beat them. With the question marks. Well, yeah, that, yeah. There you and go. even <laughs> even the one team that finished ahead of us, yeah. right? That we could potentially say right. we're kind of a good head to head. They slapped us up five two, right? And right. they changed their coach, and they added a guy like Emil Forsberg. And Lewis okay. Morgan is coming back. Yeah. 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 So I mean, to me, there's more questions than there are answers. One and two is the competitiveness of the the um the east right Which the east is, is ridiculously yeah stacked. so i mean six to me like I, I i'd have to see enzo are... banging goals week in week out yeah. like cooking from the get-go for me to even consider us to be ask me this question team. again once coachella is over yeah but i mean like how much can the preseason really determine well what i all i can see is highlights of us going up two nil and then all of a sudden it's two <laughs> two right i have no idea like yeah. what happened to be in fair these that. game these first two games i feel like more of a conditioning for sure. aspect right? for Let's sure try everybody out but you have to remember last season we went undefeated under latanzio in preseason what did that lead to oh, well never mind I was gonna, <laughs> <laughs> it led to complacency for sure yeah so to me, I need to see some solid signings coming into this squad. I'm not panicked. I am not panicked yet, right? I mean, again, I think... I don't think it's about being panicked. I think it's more being realistic, right? Like, yeah, for sure. The reality is that, like, there's very little to go off of to say, you know, this team yeah. is a top six team or this team can actually push into these because everything from a logic perspective is telling us no, right? Like, it's more yeah. of like, dang, we're hoping that the team does well versus... Here is an established rubric of what we can do to, you know, finish in a top six side. I just think the summer is going to be big for us. Whatever, Bro, the season is starting. What you mean the summer? I, 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 <laughs> oh, I was talking about the cruise that you were taking us on with the top bin cash, right? I thought that was all the cruise money right there, no? Yeah. No, I just think, I don't know. It's really going to just depend, again, on the playing style and... If Capetti steps up, right? I think that's going to be a big thing for us. If Capetti sort of still got the same sort of half-ass attitude he seemed to have last year, I, I think we're we're going to be struggling come uh, the summer. The other thing I think, and when he talked about uh, Coachella and and how important it could be, I think the, the big question mark besides getting new signings and the starting eleven is also just Charlotte's depth. Now yeah, I think that is something we can get a sense of from Coachella. How good does Petkovic look out there? Yeah. How good does Pedro look out there? Right? These are like or Tiger Smalls, some of these like uh, more depth pieces. Like, do we actually have some depth amongst these young players? Can they ball? Can they play? Can they show up? I think we can learn some of that from yeah. Coachella. I don't think we're going to be able to learn how good our starting 11 is no, comparatively. No, no, no. I wasn't saying that. Or anything like that. But I do yeah. think we could see like how good is Pedro yeah. actually? Does he look like he could compete for that starting job? You know, I think that's a question that Those could are potentially great get yeah, answered. Yeah, I like that. I mean, we saw that a lot last season with introducing guys like Ajimang in, yep. who would come in and score. Brandon Cambridge with that yeah. brace. Privet sliding into that center back hybrid role. I mean, is Bender going to step up this year if he right. comes back, right? Yeah, I mean, so. you know, I, I don't know. I feel, anyways, I'm just going to, I just want to watch You these. went from 6th to now, I don't know. Yeah, 13th. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the MLS. That's the Eastern Conference yeah, yeah. right now. We're all the, all the teams are going from six to thirteenth. That's like kind of the yeah. range. Well, let's hope we go from thirteenth to six. I just, I'm yeah. just curious to see if they got a spring in this step come uh, the 24th, right? And and obviously all that is brought out during preseason. So nice. I just all right, see I'll end play. it with this one last question for you guys. What, okay. what do you want to see most in year three out of Charlotte FC? Out of Charlotte FC, or yeah, I would like to see more Brian uh, being on that show on live because apparently <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he can't be on a virtual. He can just drive an yeah. hour and a half to a, to a live show. Uh, what do I want to see out of? I just want to see us not be afraid to shoot and take on a player, right? Yeah. Just like if we're outside the box and then there's nothing going on, just pop it in there or just try to beat the guy. Stop trying to, you know, ticky tacky it all the way into the goal. Yeah, more volume, more shots for sure. I yeah. think that's a huge, huge piece of it. And even if that means less possession less just control of the game if when you have control of the game are you more efficient with when you have the yeah. ball i mean and just getting those numbers up i think that's a huge 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 part of it i honestly while left center back is a, is a key and obviously that's something that dean smith's addressed i really feel like a big part of what will make the back line better is once the midfield and the attack is more respected i don't think charlotte fc since they've been a club has really Definitely been respected attack. yeah um, by other teams, I feel like outside of Carroll, I just don't think they've had, yeah. they've earned earned the respect from the league in terms of like, yeah, we got to really, I mean, they average like nine or ten shots a, a game, which is like well below average, For and sure. that's like, 
And so if that's, if that's what you're doing, it's just like other teams are coming in like, okay, we can really match these guys when yeah. it comes to the attacking end. And so we yeah. feel more confident in pushing and pressing. And so yeah. that has to be, I think, a big part of the change. you got to find, whether it's Enzo, whether it's Ajiman showing up, whether it's Vargas, they just have to find the respect from the league and be like, hey, we're going to show up and really put some numbers on you, whether it's just shot volume, goals, all the rest. I think all those things, the goals end up coming if you bring in the volume uh, generally, like that's, yeah. that's how it works. So t- what what I want to end with is, you know, the front office's message to the fan base was, you know, from what Latanja produced, it wasn't good enough, yeah. right? So heading into year three, you make this coaching change. You haven't signed, you know, anybody of significance yet, so you're betting a lot on the squad that yeah. you have, right? So that's what you're telling us, right, that, you know, that you have what you have is better than ninth. So we better see that this season, right? We better see a competitive Charlotte. To me, what I look at, you know, I don't think we have enough. But there, the no, message from inside was, hey, what Latanzo produced wasn't good enough, so we're going to do it ourselves, you know? So yeah. you saw even my headphones got yeah. excited. That's because that. your head started <laughs> swelling, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, guys, thank you for uh, joining us tonight. Lee, where, where can everybody find you at? Uh, always at CLTFC Fan TV on all your socials. Uh, we switched our uh, live shows to Tuesday nights at 9. Um, you know, so jump in there. We're going to have some cool shit going on there, man. We got some great interviews coming up. We got we got some really cool stuff happening. You can call in and bitch and complain about the team or, or whatever. So, yeah, again, at CLTFC Fan TV. And thanks for having me, Top Ben. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at BAM. Bam! Mauer Media. <laughs> you can also find all my written content at topbin90.com. And me and Blake are going to be back on the mic soon, too, for uh, hey, Dropping Points, our MLS Fantasy show. We're starting that up pretty soon. For sure. And anybody that wants him on this show, except CLTFC yeah. Fan yeah. TV, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Like, I'm hearing other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> With that, it's over. Go! All right, peace. <laughs>